ever wondered what wine he is? Not this kind of wine, of course, but rather this one. The software that's absolutely revolutionary. This video covers a topic that was suggested by Mempla six months ago. Sorry for being late, I'm here now. There were tons of foundational topics I wanted to cover first. System calls, for example, on Linux. But no worries, your long wait is finally over because I'll be explaining wine in the most detailed way possible. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Mohido, and today we have a very astonishing tool called Wine. First of all, let me give you an overview of what we are dealing with. When we write code, we must use specific functions that the operating system cannot provide. Things like opening files, creating windows, managing memory, ba basically, you're asking the kernel to do some work for you. Here's where it gets interesting with Windows. In Linux, you can just make a direct call, a system call to the kernel, but Windows says, oh no, 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 they made it more complicated. Windows applications don't talk directly to the kernel. Instead, they follow this weird path. Your application calls basically a function from Windows DLLs, like user32 or the GDI library. Windows DLLs are just literally functions compiled as binaries and loaded to memory. They're called dynamic libraries. We have something similar in Linux and that is um, shared objects. But we're not diving into that today. Know that it calls a function from a specific binary. And these DLLs, these binaries, then call another binary, another function from another binary, and that binary is kernel32.dll. And this is not the kernel code actually, this is some interface. And that interface will finally make the actual system calls to the Windows kernel. Now, this raises a huge portability problem. Windows system calls are completely different from Linux or Unix system calls. I, as a matter of fact, we do not even know how exactly Windows system calls look like because Microsoft gives them a secret. So, back again to the topic, if you want to write a Windows application, you're locked into their ecosystem. Now, imagine you want to target Linux systems as well. You will have to write your entire application to use Linux system calls instead of the Windows binaries, that dynamic libraries that the Windows provides. That's two completely different code bases, and that will make it extremely difficult to maintain and scale that application. So, what do we do? What's the solution? Bob Amstad and Eric Youngdale. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing their names correctly. These Gentlemen, three decades ago started this beautiful software called Wine, and the idea is brilliantly simple. So what they did is they essentially reversed, engineered, and re-implemented most of the functions in the Windows libraries, but made them target Linux kernels instead. Same names, same function interfaces, but completely different internal logic, different implementation. The idea is that Wine creates this what's called a Wine server process on Linux. Think of it as a giant process containing most of the Windows functions that applications need. Just keep in mind that it doesn't contain all functions because that will literally be impossible. It means that we will have to implement the entire Windows operating system all over again. So when you write a Windows applications on Linux, Wine sits in the middle like a translator. Your app calls a Windows function and Wine says, oh, I got you there, brother. And here's the function you called, but secretly it's doing Linux magic behind the scenes. Now let's talk about gaming and graphics. We know that games use the GPU to render stuff on the screen. Thus, game developers must use a graphics API to tell the GPU what to render. Now, for a reason or another, some developers will implement their games in DirectX or Direct11 or Direct12, whatever Windows come up with. And these are Windows-specific graphics APIs. Application written in these graphics APIs will not run on other platforms. So how can we play games using Wine on Linux, right? Here's where Wine gets clever with the graphics. It translates Windows graphics library calls, the DirectX 9, 11, 12, into Vulkan or OpenGL calls, of course, depending on the DirectX version. Now, these two graphics APIs, Vulkan and OpenGL, are cross-platforming graphics APIs, so they work nicely on Linux. If you want to learn more about graphics APIs, system calls, I have these two videos, you can check them out whenever you want.
Now, this is a fun fact. Some parts of Wine actually even run on Windows. Mind-blowing, I know. The idea is that it helps new games run on older GPUs that do not support modern Direct 12. Now, here is the tricky part. Some of those applications require specific Windows DLLs with very particular versions. This means that Wine users often need to configure Wine before running applications. And let's be honest, not everyone is a fan of configuring software. That's where many third-party applications come in handy, like Winetrix, which is used to configure Wine. Well, we can also compile the application before even running it to be targeting Linux systems so that our application will be running natively on Linux without a Wine server, the translator. And that can be done through a library called WineLib. WineLib, of course, is a library that contains the implementation of the Windows functions. There are tons of applications that wraps over Wine. One of them is the famous Proton application that is used by Steam. It has some problems though, just be careful, but overall, you can play most of the Windows games on Linux using Steam directly. And also I had a problem with running UGU, so I had to change the launch configuration of Proton. I haven't seen this problem with any other games, so it can also have problems and you might need some extra configurations. For example, here I have UGU. It doesn't have a Linux support, but it runs on Windows. So let's click play. And as you can see, the window will start and we just playing UGU now. All right, then enough theory, let's get our hands dirty. Now there are two ways to install Wine, really. You can just install it using the Wine package from their website, or you can just build it yourself. And that's what we're going to do today. As you can see, let's clone the repository and follow the documentation. The documentation says we have to use .configure and that will configure the repository for building. And finally, we have to use make. And make will just use a tons of compilation rules, tons of compilation configuration to compile the code, to build the code. So it is as easy as that. Configure and then make. In the beginning, I fell into the same trap. I run configure, it says it needs a library. I install the library. I run configure again, it needs a library. I install the library. I run configure again, it needs a library. I install the library. I run configure again, it needs a library, I install the library. And after a few libraries, I felt so damn miserable. Why the hell this configure doesn't install the damn libraries? I mean, I wrote the first Hello World program a decade ago, and it was defeated by Wine. Going back to the Stack Overflow, old school, I saw a comment that literally gave the solutions and inspired me. He says, use source repositories to install the dependencies. So, um, some of you might be asking what the hell does he even mean? Um, I'm going to show you the steps directly in this video and explain what source repositories and package management is in another video. Let me know if you are interested in that topic. Uh, I reply to all your comments, so just put them in the comment and your wish is always my command. So, back to the topic. What he means simply is just to simply follow the wine installation guide, not the building guide, huh? The installation guide, at least to a certain point in the guide. Then we stop after that and go back to the building steps. And let me show you. First of all, let's open the installation guide. Go to your distribution. I'm using Ubuntu, by the way. Follow these steps. First of all, the preparation. Add the 32 architecture to the package manager. DPKG, in my case, Ubuntu. Uh, then um, getting your distro information and then download the key. Let's download the key. Okay, we just copy paste it. And now let's add the source repository, the wine repository to the package manager. So the package manager apt for Ubuntu, in my case, knows where to find wine. But we will not be installing wine. No, we will just be installing the dependencies of wine. After adding the source repositories, now just stop. So don't follow the documentation. Throw the documentation away. Don't continue the installation. We are all done here. Back to the building. First, we need to edit the repository data that we just added. It will be in the place, in this place specifically. So I'm going to VIM to that place. And then add dip source beside the dip. 
probably if you're downloading it for the first time, adding the repository for the first time, it will be only dev. We will be adding dev source right next to it. We save, we exit, and then we do sudo apt update. That's an Ubuntu. We're updating the package manager. Now, finally, let's install the required dependencies. So the time configure can configure the damn thing. That's a plot twist. That's a plot twist of wine. After doing this, you will need to drink some wine. <laughs> Stuff along all in. Anyway, um, let's go. So do opt. Now we will not be installing. We will just be installing the dependencies. So to do that in apt, we just do build dependencies. Now this is specific to Ubuntu. You have to check your own distribution and how to install the dependencies without installing the package itself. After installing the dependencies, um, that will be around 100 megabytes, but I already have them here installed. So to the next step. Now let's run configure, but this time I'll be enabling the Wine64 version because I'll be building that one. And press enter and then we wait, 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 wait. Okay, it's finished and it says that there are some warnings, some libraries are not found, but we don't care about that, believe me. These libraries are not very important for now. And to build it, it says here, we have to do make, we have to run make. And let's make, this will take some time, so I'll just make and wait and probably will see you after an eternity. Okay, it's over on my side, and if this finishes without problems for you, then you should be really, really, really proud of yourself. You can high five that like button and shake the hand of that share button. And that's it for the building phase. We built wine, we have wine here, and we can just use wine, notepad, and a notepad will pop up, but will not, this is, notepad is not interesting. Let's actually run an old project that I made. I had this old project, which is 3D rasterizer. The rasterization is the process of freely drawing triangles into a screen. And I actually have built that a few days ago. This is a .exe file in front of me, and we can run it. This is literally Windows code. Let's go here, there, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, we have a cow. Now this is all really that is into it. You just download any exe file and open it through Wine. Just make sure not to use sudo, not to run it as root, because exe files can contain malicious code. Just be careful. This is the end. Thank you all, and special thanks to Mo Zaki for being my first YouTube member. And special thanks to Ali Samir, who helped me editing most of this video. And with that said, till the next time.